Awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for having me tonight. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Robin, and I'm a current PhD candidate at the University of Calgary, uh, specifically in the Faculty of Kinesiology. Uh, my research mostly pertains to nutrition and dietary supplement use um, across various populations. And so that's what we're going to kind of dive into today. So I'm going to do an overview of nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's going to be really fun. So if at any time you have questions, please do not hesitate to write them in the chat or raise your hand. Um, I think, uh, Caitlin, if you could moderate that uh, a little bit more, because I can't, unfortunately, I can't see everybody on my screen. Um, that would be great. But feel free to ask, ask me questions at any time. And if I, if it looks like I'm looking away from you guys, I, I do apologize. I do have two screens. And so I'm just looking over at my notes to make sure that I'm not missing any important uh, concepts. And with that, I think it's time to get started. So tonight we're going to do a couple uh, overview points of nutrition. So first of all, we're going to talk about what exactly is food. I know it's a pretty broad topic and it seems kind of obvious, but when we break down food, it's actually very important to know what is comprising uh, the food itself. And then we'll go over how much you should be eating and drinking as well. And of course, when you should be eating and drinking. Okay, so if we look at food itself, it's great, we can eat it, it's lovely, <laughs> we all love food, but when we dig a little bit deeper, um, food essentially provides us with two things, and those two things are nutrients and energy, or calories. And so nutrients are really important substances in food, as they are required for growth, and of course our body's functioning. Um, there's going to be four types of nutrients. The first one is what's called macronutrients, and those are larger substances. And I'm sure you've all have heard of these. These are going to be your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats. Next, when we dive a little bit deeper, we're going to have our micronutrients. And these are very, very, very tiny substances in foods. And these are going to be our vitamins and our minerals. Um, the third component of food is going to be what's called other non-nutrients, and these are typically um, phytochemicals that are derived from plant foods, and they are really important to our bodies as they can actually help us fight off diseases. So I'm sure you've all have heard of antioxidants, um, polychemicals, um, and things like that. Also, fiber uh, is going to be part of non-nutrients um, as well. And lastly, the fourth component of food is, of course, water. So the second overall component of food or what food is giving us is, of course, energy or calories. And this is just the amount of fuel that each food specifically can provide us with when we ingest it. Now, of course, it's really important that we're eating enough calories, but we also want to make sure we're not eating too many calories. The amount of calories that everybody needs is going to be completely individualized and it's going to depend on our gender, on our age, on our height, on our weight, and even our physical activity levels. So we want to make sure we're not eating too little, so we're not feeling too tired and we're not losing unnecessary weight, but we also don't want to be eating too many because that can lead to weight gain and weight, extra weight gain can lead to uh, the development of disease. Okay, so here I've outlined basically what the calorie content of each nutrient is. So as we can see, there are four types of nutrients that are giving us calories or energy. Uh, the first one is carbohydrates. So things like bread, pasta, rice, all of those types of foods are gonna be giving us four calories per gram. Proteins, just like carbohydrates, proteins are also giving us four calories per gram. And we can think of proteins such as uh, meat or eggs or even milk protein. Um, Non-animal non sources of protein would be things like um, tempeh or tofu um, and also beans. Moving into our fats, they're actually giving us more than double the amount of energy um, at nine calories per gram. Lastly, alcohol is giving us seven calories per gram. And you might have noticed that I did not put alcohol in the previous slide um, because although it is technically a nutrient, it's not considered 
healthy. It's not providing us with any beneficial uh, ingredients or anything like that. In fact, alcohol is toxic and it can lead to um, problems with development and growth of our tissues and our cells. So we want to avoid that, that component. Uh, lastly, vitamins and minerals, although very, very important, they're actually not giving us any calorie content at all. Okay, so let's dive right into carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are going to be either simple sugars or complex carbs. An example of a simple sugar would be your white sugar that you're going to put in your cookies when you're baking them. And an example of complex carb is going to be something like oatmeal. Now the difference between these, they are both giving us the same amount of calories, but the difference is, is how our body breaks them down. Their actual chemical structure is different. And that means our bodies breaks them down differently. So carbohydrates, most arguably the most important nutrient from food because it gives us energy. In fact, our brains can only function off of carbohydrates. So if we were to never eat carbohydrates again and only eat protein and fat, we would not last very long because our brains would actually shut down. So we want to eat good carbohydrates. Um, if we have enough carbohydrates, we're going to feel really good. We're going to feel energized. It's going to help our moods. And as athletes, you guys, you're going to perform better. I'm sure you've all have maybe gone to a game or a practice and you maybe didn't eat enough beforehand and you kind of didn't feel all that good. And maybe that reflected in your performance. I know I definitely have. So we want to make sure we are eating properly and enough before our athletic endeavors. So on the flip side, like I mentioned, if we're not eating enough carbohydrates, we're going to feel really, really tired, really sluggish. We might be a little bit cranky and it can cause poor performance outcomes as athletes. Okay, so here's a slide outlining what I would call nutritious carbohydrates. I don't really like to use the word healthy or unhealthy. In my opinion, there's no such thing as an unhealthy food. It's just how much you eat of that particular food. So I'm going to look away from healthy and okay. non-healthy. You guys are. Sorry? Here. Oh, to uh, nutritious and non-nutritious. So when we look at this slide, we see lots of fruits. We lots see lots of vegetables. We see whole grain breads and pastas and even beans. And so these are types of nutritious carbohydrates that can really provide our body with nutrients, sustained energy and stable blood sugar levels. Now, if we go into this slide, I hope it doesn't make you too hungry, but this would be types of non-nutritious or less nutritious carbohydrates. And we want to kind of stay away from these as much as possible. I mean, of course, everything in moderation, but these types of carbohydrates really don't give us a whole lot. Um, in, in candy, in donuts, there's really no nutrients. There's no benefit to eating them other than they make us, you know, they taste good. Um, but really when we eat them, our blood uh, sugar levels are going to spike, which can lead to a sugar crash. So when we eat carbohydrates, our blood sugar is going to go like this, it's going to skyrocket. And what happens is our body releases insulin. And insulin is a hormone that is going to help draw out the sugar from our blood and spread it out throughout our bodies. Or it can actually store it in our livers for later on, which is pretty cool. So if we were to eat types of carbohydrates like this, our candies, our donuts, our cookies. Well, that's going to be a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugar all at once. So our blood sugar levels are going to go like this. They're going to skyrocket and our body has to work that much harder to try and get that sugar out of our blood. And so what's going to happen, there's going to be a whole lot of insulin coming in and it's going to go like this. So, so completely up and down, and that's going to lead to a big sugar crash, making us feel very, very tired and probably hungry because all of our carbohydrate is, has been um, stored or put to use in our bodies. Now, if we were to eat something like oatmeal, yes, our blood sugar would go up, but it's, it takes a longer time for these types of foods to digest and break down. Therefore, our blood sugar levels are going to be more sustained. So instead of looking like this, it might look more like this, giving us more sustained energy throughout the day. Okay, so here is our first um, 
uh, sorry, first activity. I don't know what these lines are on the on the screen, unfortunately. But in the chat, if you guys could tell me what healthy or nutritious carbohydrates do you guys like? Um, which carbohydrate would you be brave enough to try? And if you could think of a healthy carbohydrate to eat instead of an unhealthy one or a less nutritious one. So I'll give you an example. My favorite healthy yeah. carbohydrate, I love oatmeal. <laughs> I really do love oatmeal. I also love fruit. Um, which one would I be brave enough to try? I don't know. I think I've tried a lot of things, um, maybe different types of grains that I haven't tried. Um, and a healthy one instead of a less healthy one. Um, I think maybe whole wheat bread instead of uh, white refined bread. And I'm trying to find the chat here. Oh, there we go. Okay. I love oatmeal too. Yeah, so good. Oatmeal and fruit, yes. Yogurt, okay, good, good. I wanna try kiwi, cool. Kiwi is really delicious and one of the best fruits for you. I'm just scrolling up here. Okay. Oh, people are just saying hi. I eat oatmeal every morning and night. Perfect. Oatmeal is so beneficial. Lots of fiber in there. Pasta and fruit. I love pasta too. Fruit vegetables. Perfect. Vector cereal. Oh my goodness. I love vector cereal. So delicious. So really interesting um, and good choices, you guys. Really great. I'm going to minimize the chat and we're going to continue on here. But feel free to keep, to keep uh, chatting. Okay. So this slide I put in here because I wanted to give you a visual representation of just how much sugar is in a bottle of pop. Now, I'm sure we all love pop. Um, I don't drink a lot of it, to be honest. I remember when I was 12 years old, my friend and I made a bet. We said, okay, <laughs> I bet you can drink pop for, you can give up pop for one month. And I did, and I honestly haven't drank a lot, whole lot since. Um, so if we look at a standard bottle of Coca-Cola, we see here on the nutrition label, 65 grams of sugar. And a lot of the time people will see that and they think, okay, you know, whatever, I don't know what that means, that's fine. Or they just completely ignore the, the label altogether. But if we were to actually take a visual representation and scoop out the sugar in that one bottle of pop, this is what it's gonna look like, okay? So this is a, a pretty standard glass. It's a little bit small, but it's probably an eight ounce glass. And if we take 65 grams of sugar, divided by four, 16, approximately 16 table, uh, teaspoons, sorry, teaspoons. This is how much sugar is in that bottle of Coke. So if I were to take this, it would be the same as me. If we chug a can of Coke, it's the same as me chugging all of this sugar at one time. And of course, that's going to wreak havoc on our blood sugar levels and our bodies. So if we were to compare that, if we want a flavored drink, well, maybe we can reach for some flavored water. And how much sugar is going to be in that? This much. So we can see the difference. We can save this much sugar going into our bodies if we just switched to a flavored water. Now, I'm not saying don't drink pop. I'm not saying that at all. Everything in moderation. I'm just saying maybe if you were have you really wanted some Coke, don't drink the whole bottle at once. Have half of it and then the next day have the other half just to give our bodies a little, little bit of a break. Okay, let's move on to protein. Protein is really, really important, you guys. Um, essentially, it's the building blocks of our bodies, of our tissue, of our cells, of our muscles, even of our hair and our nails. Uh, protein is made of 20 amino acids. And I know it's a little bit complicated, but I'll give you an easy way to think of it. If we think of amino acids as Lego bricks. So if we take our Lego bricks and we take them and they're our amino acids, we build a Lego house with them. That house is going to represent our bodies and our tissues. So we need those little Lego bricks, the amino acids, to build our tissue and repair our tissue. Now there are nine essential amino acids, meaning that our bodies cannot produce them. So we have to eat them through food. We have to ingest them. There are 11 non-essentials, which means our bodies can actually produce them. We're very efficient that way. We can produce more than half of the amino acids that we need to survive. Um, 
So as we can see from this um, slide, there are quite a few methods or foods that we can get protein from. So I have on the top there some animal sources of protein. So we have our eggs, we have our meat, our fish, our poultry, which is chicken, um, even cheese and milk products. They have a lot of protein in them. We can also get them from supplements. So whey supplements, casein supplements, um, protein bars, protein shakes, etc. But we can also get protein from non-animal sources. And there's a ton of them. You can see in the picture, uh, everything from tempeh to chickpeas to even vegetables, which gives us another reason to eat our greens. <laughs> even spinach has, has protein in it. So we can get it from a variety of sources. Okay, back to the chat, you guys. What are your favorite protein foods and which protein foods would you like to try? I would say my favorite protein foods are eggs. I eat eggs almost every day. I also love milk and I love fish. I love salmon. Uh, which type would I like to try? I think I would like to try tempeh. I've never tried it before. Okay, hummus, good. Ground beef, delicious. Chicken, delicious. Chicken and pork, awesome. Eggs, bread, uh, milk bread and salmon. Omelets, ooh, good. That's a really good one. Hummus and cheese, awesome job, you guys. Yeah, really. Hey Robin, I, Robin, yes. you just have a question. Um, yes. A hand is raised. I'm so sorry. I can't really see it. Ooh, yes, okay. cool, dude. Go ahead. Oh, I think you're on mute. No, I'm not. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How do we get the back to? Do you have a question? No, I don't. Okay, we're just going to lower your hand and we're going to keep going then. Oh, no questions? No, okay, okay. So great job on the chat, you guys. I really love your answers. Really, really cool. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, how do I get that? There we go. Okay, so let's move on to the last one. I apologize for my pictures not showing up fully. Um, but our last component is fats. Um, and just like protein, there are different types of fats. These can be saturated, unsaturated, essential fatty acids, and cholesterol. Um, they're all going to provide us with nine calories per gram, but the difference in these guys is going to be their chemical structure and their carbon bonds. Now, I'm not going to get into the chemistry behind fats, but that is just the main difference between them. Uh, fats are really great. I know they have a lot of energy and calories in them, but we do not want to eliminate them because they're very, very, very important to our bodies. Not only do they provide us with energy, but they also also really help with joint lubrication, they help protect our organs, and they help keep us warm. So if you have someone who has a six pack and very low body fat, they will still have a layer of fat behind their abdominal muscles to help protect the internal uh, organs. Now with yeah. fats, we want to make sure we're not eating too many because they do have a lot of calories and that can lead to unnecessary uh, weight gain, but we should not be eliminating them all together. Oh, oh, <laughs> there we go. So as you can see, some better choices for fats would be avocados, eggs, olive oil, salmon, nuts, and the kind of the less healthier, nutritious ones would be things like processed foods. Okay, let's move into micronutrients, our vitamins and our minerals. So there's 13 essential vitamins, including vitamin A, the B vitamins, uh, C, D, E, and K. And there's 15 essential minerals, including uh, ones like calcium, zinc, and iron. So these are really important because they are, uh, they're not gonna give us energy, but they are so important for our body functions. A lot of them act as enzymes to break down our food, to, um, for chemical reactions in our bodies, for, for building tissues and repairing tissues and things like that. So they are very important. Um, for example, calcium and vitamin D, very important for bone health. Vitamin A, very important for hair, skin, and eye health. Um, and vitamin C is actually an antioxidant. It can help with our immune function. 
So they are really important. And of course, we can get them from a variety of sources. We can get them, uh, a lot of the times they come from fruits and vegetables, so very natural foods. But we can also get them from fortified foods. And that means vitamins and minerals are added to foods that are already made, such as cereals or milk products. And of course, we can always get them from vitamin, uh, sorry, supplements themselves. But we want to be careful with supplements because they're not all made the same and a lot of them out there are junk <laughs> to put it nicely they're, they're not good okay let's move on to non-nutrients so these are the phytochemicals in plant-derived foods that can really help boost our immune system and help our bodies fight disease so for an example of this one i put beta carotene um, which is actually the phytochemical that gives carrots their orange color and beta carotene is really important for eyesight and skin health. So although they're not giving us, again, they're not giving us energy, they are helping with those really, really teeny tiny um, chemical reactions in our bodies. And water. So water, we all know, is really important and we should be drinking it throughout the day. The amount you need is going to depend on your activity levels, your age, um, and even your gender sometimes. So it is personalized and best to kind of just figure it out on your own, how much makes you feel good, how much is you become too bloated or anything like that. But at a minimum, I typically say two liters a day. If you're exercising that day, bump it up to two and a half to three. Water is really important as it cools, cools us down. If we're hot or we're exercising, um, it helps us feel less tired because it helps with our brain function. And of course, it helps us avoid dehydration, which can become very, very dangerous if we become dehydrated. Okay, another activity for you guys eating out. We all love to eat out. I love to eat out. I eat out, well, before COVID, <laughs> I ate out two, three times a week. Uh, cut back a little bit now, but I wanted to ask you guys specifically these two questions because I know as athletes, you do travel and eating out at a restaurant is obviously the go-to choice. It's very easy. Um, so I want to know which restaurants do you normally eat at when you're traveling and what are some potentially better options for restaurants when you're traveling. I remember when I played softball a long time ago, our go-to restaurant was always Boston Pizza. And ever since I stopped playing, I've never ate there again because I, I got sick of it. Um, so let me see your answers. New restaurant called The White Elephant. Ooh, I've never heard of that. Sounds interesting. Boston Pizza, yep, that was my go-to. Ricky's, McDonald's, Tim Hortons, Subway, perfect. Subway, good. I would argue that Subway is a really good choice for on-the-go food, depending on what you get. <laughs> but for the most part, there it is pretty good. Nando's Grilled Chicken, nice. Yeah, really good. Jigo Juice, another great choice. Good choices. Denny's, yeah, Denny's is really good. Again, depending on what you get. KFC, Edo, good. KFC, I would say maybe not the healthiest, but everything in moderation. It's really not too fatty or fried or processed. You wanna be eating quite clean. So lots of carbohydrates, fruits, vegetables, lots of water, probably avoiding fats before because fats can kind of, they take a long time to digest. So like they can kind of make us feel sluggish. Opa, Opa is a good choice. Perfect. So really great choices, you guys. Light fried food, chopped leaf. Awesome. Perfect. Coco Brooks. Mm, good pizza. I'm just okay, going to jump in again, Robin. Chat. Sorry, Caitlin. Then, Robin, you have a question again from Yes. Preston? Yes, question. Preston, do you have a question? Listen. You're ready to have total occupation. Okay, Was there a question? Ahead, Robin. Sorry, Caitlin. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, so good job, you guys. Um, I would say better choices, Jugo Juice, Edo, Subway, um, 
Tim Hortons is actually not that bad, depending on what you get. So you guys nailed that. Hi. Yes. Is there a question out there? It doesn't look like it. Nope. Yeah. Okay. I see Carla. She's raising her hand. Yeah, yeah and I'm right here. Yes. Do you have a question? I do have a question. Go ahead. Um, I um uh, the trust trust question is um I I do um the question is for myself is um I I do go I I do go to Tim Hortons to get a get a, um 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 to get to get a bowl of soup but for dinner is really good. I yep. like I go to Tim's to uh, to get my lunch also and plus my dinner at night on Mondays. Mhm. Mm That's my question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you don't, yeah, I mean, Tim Hortons, honestly, they make good food. Mm -hmm. um, it's not terrible. Um, and if you're just going once a week, that's totally fine. If you're going every day for every single meal, that might be a lot of sodium building mm. up. But once a, once a week is totally fine. Okay. Yeah, totally fine. Okay, Robin, we have a few more questions. So yes. Alex, you can unmute. question um should we do like uh uh take out for a festival like once or twice a week um yeah i mean are you asking what how much you should how many times you should go um perhaps we could just do for for just uh weekends yeah, I think honestly, if you go to for getting fast food during the week or on the weekend, I don't think it matter matters which day. Um, mm -hmm. I would probably try and stay away from fast food on days that you are training, mm -hmm. or if you're training the next day, you might want to stay away from eating a Big Mac the night before because what you eat the night before is going to affect how you feel tomorrow. So every day, what you eat that day is going to. Um, influence how you feel tomorrow so you might want to stick away from fast foods be the the night before games and the day of games but after you finish your competition go ahead that that's totally fine i think as long as you're just everything in moderation that's kind of my my um i don't know what i what i believe in so as long as you're going once twice three times a week as long as it's not every day then you're totally fine yeah with all due respect uh I don't ever eat uh, hamburgers from a fast food restaurants, but <laughs> so I started uh, eating the chicken burgers, which is healthier than hamburgers itself. Right, right. Yeah, great choice. Great choice. Okay, we have a few more questions. Uh, Lori, you can unmute. Okay, my best way of staying healthy if I'm traveling is um, we usually we pack like we go and get a few groceries and then we make our own lunches mm -hmm. and that way that that way if you get tempted to want to go and eat out you got your cooler full of uh homemade food like veggies fruit mm -hmm. um sandwiches drinks all that is and that saves you from uh having the urge to go and buy junk food I also yeah. have a soda stream. Yeah. So oh, I've been good idea. using that instead of going and buying like canned pop or bottles of water, mm -hmm. bottled pop, I actually make my own soda stream. I even make cranberry and cram water and cranberry juice. And it's so much healthier than um, going and drinking pop nonstop like I used yeah. to because. As an athlete, you guys have taught us how to become healthy. And also, I want to stay strong and not break any bones and mm -hmm. end up at the Peter Lougheed. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Plus, a really, I want to compete really again. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Lori. That's such a great tip. Um, and not only will 
you'll be eating healthier if you pack your own foods, you're also probably going to be saving some coin because eating out for every meal, it gets expensive. Um, so if you just take the time and pre-package and pre-make your own food, that's a really great way to not only save time, but money and of course our, our health. So really great comment. Thank you, Lori. Uh, so we have a few more questions. So Danielle, you can go, you can unmute now. Uh, I'm just wondering, what is your opinion of takeout Chinese food from like a restaurant? Yeah, you know what? I love Chinese food. Um, and I eat Chinese food takeout probably once every two or three weeks. Um, I really, really love it. And again, of course, it's not going to be the most nutritious because there's going to be lots of salt and sugar added to the sauces. Um, but everything in moderation, um, a tip you can do when you are ordering, if you want to make it a little less salty, you can always ask them to completely not put on any sauce. If you're ordering vegetables, for example, you can say no sauce on the vegetables, or you can say light sauce, um, sauce on the oh. side, uh, things like that. Behind. Just little tips oh, like thank that you. to, to help a little bit, but I honestly don't give up your Chinese food. It's delicious. And you should be eating it in, in, in moderation. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, Andrew, you can unmute and ask your question. Okay, can, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, um, okay. Well, well, in Special Olympics, you know, you know like um, after work, since the thing was um, close, um, the thing was close, occasionally I would just um, go to the, go to the food court courts like um occasionally like to um opa opa or um heart harvey's and 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 uh, and um get food food like i would usually just say greek um sal salad or a chicken a chicken sandwich but instead of um crispy i would i would get it um grilled so mm. i would make a suggestion for um athletes athletes um ask for um grilled instead of um crispy because i think grilled would be a little healthier yeah. right my question is would grilled chicken be be um healthier because i usually ask for grilled chicken mm -hmm. yeah that's a really great point and that's something that i would also suggest asking for grilled versus crispy because when we ask for crispy what it means is it's deep fried so they take the chicken right put it in a batter and they're going to fry it in grease. Um, and it's not going to be as healthy as if they were just taking the chicken and putting on the barbecue and grilling it. Um, but regardless, the chicken in most restaurants is soaked in salt to help preserve it. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, Andrew grill over chicken. <laughs> right, sorry. Gr yeah. Grilled over crispy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, uh, we are going to do one more question right now for everyone else. If you could write your questions in chat, then we can get going, but we'll ask yeah. Curtis to unmute. Okay. Um, okay, I will, yeah, I had two questions, but I'll ask one for now. Um, how much water is two liters? How many glasses is that? So two liters of water is going to be what, four. So if we're thinking of an eight ounce glass, it's going to be four, eight. Okay. So Thank you. two liters of water is going to be 2000 milliliters and mm -hmm. uh, one typical cup. So a cup like, like this one mm -hmm. is uh, 250 mils. So if you divide 2000 by 250, it's going to be, eight. So eight of these guys. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I think um, we're going to just continue on with the PowerPoint, but I'm happy to stick around at the end, you guys. If you have other questions, please hold on to them. I'm more than happy to stay later um, and answer them. Okay. So great discussion surrounding restaurants, you guys, really impressed. Okay, so let's move into food labels. So I hope a lot of you turn over the food 
in the grocery store and actually look at the label. It is important. Uh, and most people just kind of ignore it, which is, it's okay too. But I think it's because most people don't really understand what it's telling you. And it tells you a lot. Um, so when you turn over the food, the packaged food, it's gonna have a nutrition label and every packaged food in Canada must have a label on it. It is the law. Uh, if it doesn't, it, well, it really shouldn't be there um, and you shouldn't buy it. So it should have a label on it. So if we turn it around, we look at the nutrition label. Well, at the top there in blue, it's going to be our serving size. So sometimes it's the entire thing such as this, one can, sometimes it's um, by weight. So if we were to take out you know, 15 crackers from a Ritz box, that might be the serving size, um, et cetera. And so that is going to, so whatever else is underneath that, that is what is referring to it. So in this one can here, the rest of the, the nutrition is referring to what's in that entire can. So every label will have calories, fat, sodium, potassium, carbohydrates, sugar, and protein. They should have, every label should have those. Um, so it's going to have the fat and the carbohydrate and the protein. So those are the macronutrients and it's going to have some micronutrients depending on the food. So those are going to be in green down at the bottom. And typically foods, the type of uh, micronutrients listed is going to reflect what that food has a lot of. So for example, milk products are going to have a longer list of micronutrients than something like crackers. Um, so for example, milk will have calcium, vitamin D, and any other um, minerals and vitamins that are fortified or put into that product. Whereas something like crackers, um, it'll probably not have too much. It might have a little bit of iron, uh, but it's not going to have any vitamin C. It's not going to have any um, uh, vitamin K, things like that. So they're probably not going to be listed. Um, and so it's just something to look out for. We want to make sure that the fat is relatively relatively low, especially saturated fat. We want to avoid that. We also want to make sure the sodium is typically lowish. This one, 80 milligrams, very, very low. Uh, potassium, so carbohydrates. And we want to look out for sugar. Sugar is often hidden in foods. And if you don't turn it over and look at the label, you might not think there's sugar in that product. But a lot of things actually do contain sugar. We just don't know it. And we also want to look at protein. So those are kind of the main things you want to look at and make sure they're either high or low. So higher protein is great. Higher carbohydrate, depending on the product, is great if it's not sugar. Uh, we want to make sure sugars are low. We want to make sure fat is, you know, low-ish. Um, and we want to look for those high micronutrients. So I'm just making sure I got all of my notes here. Misty, do you have a question? You just have to unmute yourself. What if there's hidden, I know some labels have hidden fats and hidden sugars in them. What if they do? Yeah. Well, what you can always do is you can look at the ingredient list and the ingredient list is actually um, in order of the ingredient by weight. So the number one ingredient, it's going to be the ingredient that is most in the product. It's going to be by weight. Then it's going to go okay, not so much, not so much, not so much. And the last ingredient is the ingredient that there's basically minimal of. Um, so what we do if there's hidden sugars, well, you can just kind of scan through the list. If it say sugars, we obviously know sugars. If you see um, words like fructose, high fructose corn syrup, sucrose, um, things like that, those are all keywords for sugar. It might say natural sweetener. It might say artificial sweetener. It all means the same thing. It means sugar. So you can always just look through the list and, and kind of scan out and count the number of times it says sugar in different ways. And if it's more than, you know, three or four, probably not the best for you. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I think we're going to continue on. So let's get into how much to eat. So I've outlined this table here and it kind of gives you a broad sense of how much we should be eating. So if we look at carbohydrates, as we can see from the moment you are born all the way up until you live your life, 
basically 45 to 65 percent of your daily calories should be coming from carbohydrates. So if you eat a thousand calories a day, 650 of those, uh, sorry, 450 to 650 should be carbohydrates. If you're eating 2000, it'll just be double that. And of course, it's a pretty broad range. It's, you know, it's over 20 percent. Um, so how do we know exactly what or how much we should be eating? Well, it's going to depend on your gender, your age, your height, your weight, your goal weight, and whether or not you are training, your active training, your off-season training, your off-season not training, you're in competition phase. So it is going to completely change over the course of your life and what training season you are in as athletes. So what it comes down to is just seeing what is best for you and what works best for you. You can also always work with a registered dietitian or a nutritionist to get a better idea of what you should be eating or how much you should be eating. So this slide is pretty simplistic, but it does give you an overview of how much you should be eating. Um, okay, if we look at protein, we can see that throughout the years of our lives, protein actually increases pretty cool. But if we look at fat, fat overall, it actually decreases. So the older you get, the less fat you need. And I will kind of, I'll explain a little bit as to why these things go up or down. So if we think about it, when we're born, we're pretty little and we want to grow. Um, and so protein, like I said, way, way back in my presentation are kind of like the Lego bricks to our Lego building. And so we want to make sure that we are getting enough protein. So the amino acids so that we can build our tissues and our tissues can grow and expand and repair and get bigger essentially. So we want to increase our protein to make sure that we are able to grow. Also, as we age, we do lose muscle mass. It's natural, so don't, don't worry about that. It is natural, so we wanna make sure that we are eating enough protein to maintain the muscle mass that we have. Uh, conversely, if we look at fat, why does fat go down? Well, again, if we think about it, when we're born, we're very, very little, and fat provides more than double the amount of calories or energy than carbohydrates and, and proteins. So when we're babies, uh, the majority of our diet for the first six months of life is just our mother's breast milk, and that breast milk is almost entirely fat. And so that's going to really help us put on weight and give us lots of energy to grow. But as we get older and we stop growing, we don't want to keep eating too much fat because that can actually make us put on um, unnecessary weight and unnecessary weight can lead to a lot, a lot, a lot of diseases such as um, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even cancer. So this kind of gives you a broad overview of how much you should be eating, but I would always recommend talking with a healthcare professional to specifically um, tap out exactly how much you as an individual should be consuming. Another way, if you don't want to do numbers specifically, what you can do uh, to know how much to eat is just see how you feel. If you feel hungry, your body is telling you that it needs food. So if you're hungry, you should not ignore your grumbling tummy. You should go get a snack. <laughs> you can also, you might feel dizzy. You might feel tired. You might even feel thirsty. These are also other ways your body is telling you to eat. You might think if you're thirsty that you just need to have water or something to drink. It, that's probably true, but it could also be a symptom of your body. Uh, being hello? Hello? Is there a question? Hi. Hi. Hey. You have a question for me? I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, uh, uh, so late, uh, um, uh, well, late, um, um, what is my question is, well, um, I, I, I love eggs first, uh, like, um, mama one is, uh, I, I, I like broccoli, um, I like peas, I, I love, uh, uh, I love, uh, working out awesome i love it yeah is that a question for sorry was there another question 
if you want to take a second, we have a few good ones in the chat. Oh, you know what? I will go into the chat right now. Chat. Okay. Let me go back up here. I have a question about, I could wait to wait. Okay. If someone is dizzy, what types of food or drink can help them with dizziness? Um, number one, water. Water is going to help you. It's going to go right to your brain and help you feel less dizzy. Um, also, I would say carbohydrates. So something simple and that can be rapidly digested and easily digested by the stomach. So something like a banana, something like an apple. So fruit, um, if you are very, very dizzy, honestly, if you have candy on hand, like something like a fuzzy peach or a lollipop, stick it in your mouth, under your tongue, that will immediately get into your bloodstream. Uh, it's a simple sugar, sugar. So even if it's just in your mouth, our bodies can actually start to digest those sugars and it'll go right into the bloodstream from your gums. It won't even have to go to your stomach. So um, that is a great way to increase your blood sugar. So if you're feeling dizzy, likely because your blood sugar levels are low. So even if you take a piece of candy, stick in your mouth, you might start to feel better. Um, so just have a couple candies, something like that. Is eight grams of fiber better than six grams of fiber? Yes. So the more fiber is the is better. Um, depending on our ages, typically we want to have between 25 and 30 grams of fiber per day. So definitely eight grams of fiber is going to be great. But we also want to be careful if we're eating a lot of fiber, we want to be drinking a lot of water as well. So fiber cannot be digested by our stomach. So it actually goes into our large intestine and that is where it gets uh, fermented actually. So digested or fermented. Uh, and that can cause a lot of gas or bloating and constipation. So we wanna make sure that if we're eating or bumping up our fiber intakes, we want to be bumping up our water intakes as well. Okay, let me keep going here. Amount of sleep before you play sports or hidden allergens. So if you have, if you think you have an allergy or an intolerance to a type of food, I would highly recommend going to your healthcare professional, your physician, and getting a referral to an allergen who can do tests uh, to determine which types of foods you might be intolerant to or even allergic to, and therefore you should probably stay away from. Amount of sleep before you play. Mm. I would say at least eight, eight and a half, maybe nine. Yeah. Uh, I got dizzy at work and cold weather hit me, but it felt good. <laughs> yes, I, I know this crazy weather. It, it hurts my head too. Blanket is showing. Oh, white bread. Okay. White bread is okay. Um, yes, white bread is okay. It's not as nutritious as whole wheat bread. It just means that our body is going to digest it faster and therefore we might get hungry sooner after we eat it if we were in, in opposition to if we were to have a whole wheat bread, we might feel fuller longer. And the difference between white bread and, and whole wheat bread is just the fiber content is taken out. So the actual wheat germ in the wheat is removed um, and that's all it is. It just means the fiber is taken out. So that's why whole wheat is really great because it does have fiber to bulk up and make us feel fuller longer. Yeah, Gatorade, if you're dizzy, that's wonderful too, because Gatorade has lots of sugar in it, very rapidly and quickly digested. Whole wheat bread healthy. Yes, whole wheat bread is absolutely 100% healthy. Water in my cup. I have a question. Uh, what do I do if I have some severe tummy and I have type 1 diabetes? Um, I would say... Uh, go to the emergency room. I don't, I don't have any experience with diabetes. I'm so sorry, but I would definitely say get professional help, uh, call 911 or go to the emergency room. Uh, holy bread. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of questions here. I think I'm going to just keep going on, but I will come back to all these questions. I promise you. Okay. So when, when to eat, to eat prefer, sorry, for performance. So you guys really important as athletes, you, this is mainly to avoid <laughs> stomach complications. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So if we eat too closely to our performance, we might have tummy issues because our stomachs are digesting the food as we're trying to exercise at the same time. So definitely you want to eat a I got little a bit. 
before our games or competitions. So typically you want to have a meal three to four hours before your activity. So if your activity, at, your game is at, uh, let's say 11 a.m., you want to have a meal around seven or 8 a.m. Uh, if you are feeling hungry, you can have a small snack about one hour before, okay, okay. and this is going to be carbohydrate based. So something easy to digest, something like a banana is perfect. Um, but of course, you guys know your, your body's best. So it depends on how you feel um, after eating and before training. So if you can, I know some people, they can eat a full meal and exercise 20 minutes later and they're fine. Some people... They don't want to eat anything um, and they will, you know, run a marathon completely on an empty stomach with nothing in it, not even water. So, of course, it just depends on your body and how you feel. But these are just kind of general, general guidelines. Okay, whoops, I think, is it working? Is there a question? What about, what about salt? Is it, good, is it okay to have, okay, not much, if he can't, is it okay to have some salt and not much salt? Because... Sometimes okay, not good for you. Sometimes okay, can you have some, some tiny meal? And they, 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 sometimes I know it's not good for you because it gets you um it will help it will cause your arteries. Um, sorry, what about which food are you salt. talking about? Salt, like salt, salt. Like oh, salt. Yes, yeah, salt. Sorry. Um, it's okay to salt. have some. Okay, the thing. Are you talking about ingesting salt before like, the if game? You, if, you, if, you, if you put salt and you uh, and it's still salt in with the, uh, 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 if you put salt, if you put more in, in the more add more, is it too much to put more? If you put on your when you baking, you put more on when you have to bake. Is it mm. too much for that? Oh, I see. Okay, so typically salt is not really an issue if you have high blood pressure um and it runs in your family and you know you have it you might want to avoid putting extra salt on your food um but if you are healthy and you have no medical conditions honestly salt is not a huge issue i know society likes to build up uh, and give salt a bad reputation but right. it's not it's not really that bad <laughs> All right oh thank you so if you want to you want if you want to put a little salt on your french fries or on your pasta or whatever you you can, you can go ahead yeah all right okay, thank you but i would avoid salty food i would avoid salty foods before um exercising because when you ingest salt so if you have salt okay water goes where salt is so if salt is in your stomach more water and blood is going to go to your stomach and you might feel a bit sick if you're gonna completely okay um, um if you're another gonna question i athlete. always have i want to go swimming every time i get um i get mm -hmm. cramps and i someone told me so told me so when you get cramps in your feet bananas and milk is a good thing to help you with the cramps mm -hmm. yeah yeah i would agree with that milk and bananas are good ways for right. to reduce cramps. Right, thank you yeah yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let us keep going. So during exercise, what do we want to eat? So of course, it's important to eat before to fuel our bodies. But what about during exercise? So our guidelines here, if workouts or your or your games or, or whatever um, practices are over one hour long, it might be helpful to have a little snack so you can keep your energy levels up. Um, and what types of foods work best? Well, something like, I know I keep saying this, but a banana is a really great choice. Um, if you are really short on time and you don't, you don't have time to eat a full banana, you can always buy in this picture here, you see them energy chews. There's a whole swack of brands. And what they are is they're essentially just little gummies um, and you just pop them in your mouth and very, very quick energy. Um, you also want to eat if you're sweating a lot. So when we sweat, we lose electrolytes, specifically potassium and sodium. Um, and if we lose more than we're ingesting, we can really feel not that great. We can feel tired. We can feel sore. So we want to make sure that we are ingesting enough electrolytes back into our bodies that we are losing. Um, and this would be something like Gatorade that has a lot of electrolytes in it. So we want to be sipping on Gatorade or Powerade throughout our exercise, but it depends on the, the length of exercise. If you're exercising for half an hour, you're probably not losing that much electrolytes versus if you're one hour, two hour games, you're gonna be losing more. 
You might also want to eat during exercise if you didn't eat before. If you didn't have time and you were rushing to your game, um, you might want to have a little snack during, during the game, but as long as your tummy can tolerate it. Okay, so we want to eat during, before, and definitely after exercise. Once we are finished our exercise, our bodies need food to recover and repair. Our muscles are damaged, um, our carbohydrate or glycogen stores are depleted. So we want to make sure that we are eating lots of protein and carbohydrates after exercise. Um, so as you can see, there's lots of examples of good snacks or meals that we can have afterwards. So let's see, we have some oatmeal and yogurt. We have cereal and milk. We have a bagel with banana and peanut butter. We have, looks like a chocolate milk. So lots of different uh, examples of things that contain both carbohydrates and protein to help our bodies recover. So we also want to make sure that we're eating nutritious foods because it will help uh, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, what about pe what, we're having peanut butter and banana, just, just peanut butter and banana in, in the bowl, just peanut butter and banana together to eat that way? Yeah, that's a great choice. Really great choice. I always have that every sometime in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's perfect. Okay, thanks. Perfect. I love it. Um, so we also want to make sure we're eating good foods after exercise to help prepare us for our next workout. So for example, I'm sure you guys have had competitions where you've had multiple games in a day and you might only have an hour or two hours between those games. Well, you wanna make sure that you're eating immediately after your game so your body can digest that food and use it to fuel your next game. Okay, and with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I am gonna go back to the chat here and go through some of those questions you had for me earlier. Okay, give me a moment here. I need to just scroll up. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, how many calories should a person consume? Does it depend on how much weight a person is or age? Yes, great question. The amount of calories that a person needs to be consuming each day depends on a lot of different things. So it depends on gender. So typically males need to eat more calories than females just because they're typically bigger and they have more tissues that need more fuel. Um, it also depends on your age. So as we get older, typically our calories slowly decrease, but not by much, not by much. Um, so you wanna be consistent and making sure you're eating, you know, fair enough throughout the day, but you're not eating too much or too less. It also depends on uh, your activity levels. So you guys as athletes, you guys are going to be needing more calories than someone who is sitting on the couch watching Netflix all day. Um, so there are lots of things that depend, uh, sorry, that are influencing the amount of calories. Um, 2000 calories per day is typically the general idea um, and what is portrayed in society. But of course, that's going to completely depend on how you're feeling that day. If you're sick, for example, you're gonna to have to eat more because your body needs more fuel and energy to fight off a question. the virus. Yes, question. Uh, well, uh, the, I know you said when, when you have steak, it has to be uh, the, the, the fist of the, the fist. What good size steak is a good size steak. So what I eat, for me, for, I, I'm a big guy, I eat a big, size steak for myself. Yeah. Is that, is that okay for that? I think that's fine, as long as you're not eating steak every day. No, I'm not eating steak every day. It's only a couple of days. It's only what days I, I have on my menu. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. Um, if you're talking like a big T-bone steak that's the size of your face, I would not eat more than one of those per week or maybe even two weeks. But if it's something right. like, if it's leaner, there's less fat on it, something like this, you know, it, it's, it's fine. Okay, uh, I just want to know. Yeah. Um, will you have your legs sawed off if you drink too much pop? I don't think so, that would be awful. Okay, how about ice drinks? Oh, are you? T I think they're referring to the drinks that are like flavored. Uh, they're artificially flavored, but I think they're called ice. Yeah, I think I've seen them at Costco. Okay, another great choice, but since they are flavored with artificial sweetener, 
um, I would recommend diluting them. So if you pour half of the bottle into a glass, I would fill up the other half of the glass with just plain water. So diluting it a little bit, um, just because something is artificially sweetened, it has no calories in it, such as Splenda, it's still having the same effect on your blood sugar level. So your blood sugar levels are still going to spike um, and it's going to make your body have to work a lot harder to control the blood sugar levels and get it back to a, a stabilized um, level. So I would, I always like to dilute my drinks a little bit. Gatorade, Gatorade is great. Um, I would say avoid Gatorade if you're not exercising, just because it is full of salt um, and sugar, depending on, on the type. But if you are exercising, it's a really great choice because it's going to provide you with carbohydrates. So the sugars, the quick sugars for quick energy and also sodium to replenish your electrolytes. Uh, a lot of healthy food rejects my body. How do I fix that? That's a great question. Um, it sounds like you might have an intolerance to specific foods. So I would recommend if you don't want to, um, number one, I recommend going to a physician or a registered dietitian. They can help you figure out what's going on. Um, if you don't want to, if you want to just stay home, what you can do is you can do the elimination diet. So how this works is each week you kind of eliminate one food, sorry, you eliminate all the foods you think might be hurting your stomach. So for example, bread or eggs, or let's say peanut butter. If you think those three foods are helping or sorry, are making your tummy upset, then don't eat them for two weeks. And then after two weeks, eat one of them, reintroduce it into your diet. And if it hurts your tummy, then it's probably a good indication that you have an intolerance to it. But I would definitely, number one, say go and talk to your physician. They can help you a bit more. Hey, Robin, okay, just I before you... Iron and our... Sorry, yep. just before you get going, um, it's eight o'clock, so some people may have to go. So we'll share the passcode yeah. and then we can yes. answer any questions after. Sure, 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 sure. Here is the passcode, you guys. Can everyone see that? So the passcode is three speed skaters. Sorry, can you show it one more time? Uh, right now, Robin is showing it. Uh, Robin, Ooh. if you want to say something really quick. I, I lost it. Um, can there, you? Oh, there I we go. Can you guys Got see it? Got it, screenshot it. Thank speed you. Okay, I think that's good, Robin. We can answer any more questions. I know we have a few with hands up in chat. I mean, in yep. participants. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I have low iron in our, on an iron supplement. Okay. Okay, best foods for iron. Okay, great question um, from Danielle. Yes, so females typically need, well, we do need more iron, about double the amount than males um, for a lot of different reasons. I, I won't get into that, but some foods that are best for iron intake. So things like steak, really great for iron. So a lot of your iron is typically going to come from animal products. So steak is going to be a really great option or any type of beef. If you like ground beef, um, if you like sliced beef, things like that. So beef is number one, I would say. Also um, some seafood like sardines, um, oysters, mussels, things like that are going to have a lot of iron in them for you. If you don't want to increase your intake of animal products, other things you can be eating are dark leafy greens. So spinach, collard greens, um, things like that are going to be really, really beneficial as well as beans and legumes. So things like black beans, um, chickpeas, black eyed peas, things like that are going to be really, really beneficial. Lentils as well are is another great option. Also, um, 
don't don't be afraid to eat fortified foods. So things like cereals, very high in iron. Um, they are fortified, but they're really a great way to get iron. Oatmeal is another great way to get iron as well. Okay, tang helps with flavoring. Yeah, definitely. Tang is a great way. Um, I think it is has artificial sweetener or sugar in it, but as long as you're not, you know, <laughs> pounding it in, then then that's a great way to get more water into your body. So good tip. Is vitamin water good for you? Um, I won't say it's not good for you. There's really no scientific evidence to suggest that vitamin water is good for you. Um, in fact, you're basically, once you drink the water, you're just gonna pee it out anyway. So you're actually not really absorbing those nutrients. So I would say it's just a way, it's just a money grab. Sugar. Yeah, it's, it's no, there's no point to it. <laughs> if you wanna drink it, that's fine. It's not bad for you, um, but there's no benefit. Okay, what do you do uh, on a low fiber diet? So if you're on a low fiber diet, um, for whatever reason, that's fine. Uh, I would recommend that you speak with a physician or a registered dietitian, just so you can help maintain your gut health. Um, I know if you have constipation or gastrointestinal issues, you might be on a low fiber diet for some medical conditions. So definitely talk with your physician about the best way to continue on with that diet um, and making sure that you're getting enough nutrients and you are still regular. After exercising, why is it best to drink chocolate milk? Great question. Okay. Chocolate milk is actually considered a perfect post-workout um, snack. And the reason is because it's full of protein and sugar. And I know I've said sugar is not very good for you, but when you are after exercising, you are depleted. You have no sugar in your body. You have no carbohydrates and your body, your muscles, your tissues are actually starving for carbohydrates. And so chocolate milk is a great way because it has simple sugars. So as soon as you drink it, your body can start um, absorbing and digesting the sugars, drawing it out of the milk and circulating it throughout your body. So these stores and the muscles and tissues can actually get that energy. So that's why chocolate milk is considered a great drink or sorry, post-workout snack and also tastes delicious. Um, but it does have a lot of sugar. So I wouldn't really, really recommend it, um, any other time of the day. Um, well, I've got a question. Yes. What were ice caps like those things, the, the sashi ones, ice caps from Tim Hortons? Are they? I know they're not good for you. This, the, the, it's okay sometimes have some of them sometimes a while, not often. Yeah, I honestly, like I said, I don't think you should limit or get rid of any food in your diet that you love. Um, as long as you're doing it in moderation, I love ice caps. I drink them during the summer, maybe once every one or two weeks. But you know, everything in moderation, you guys, you you know this. Um, yeah. But yeah. Enjoy your ice cap. <laughs> what, 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 when is a good time to stop drinking liquid? Are you, do you mean in terms of like before bed or before, before bed? Yeah, before bed. Yeah, before bed. Okay. Um, this is a great question. And I think the answer is it depends on your body. So for me, I, if I drink liquids anytime before, if I stop drinking liquids five hours before going to bed, I will still wake up in the middle of the night to go to the washroom. Some people, they can chug water, a huge glass right before bed, go to bed 10 minutes later and they sleep through the night. So it depends on your body. So I think the best way is just kind of trial and error. So stop drinking maybe one night, stop drinking one hour before bed, one out, one and a half hours, two hours, et cetera. Um, and then just see what works best for you. All right. Yeah. But drinking one cup of water about half an hour before bed is really beneficial um, yeah yeah but i actually have one question uh yeah. i drink tea every every night like uh, every night it's just green i have green tea yeah. um sometimes i have different teas that uh i do drink tea because i don't drink coffee night because i don't want to wake be awake and then right. yeah so Green tea actually does have caffeine in it. So if you are finding yourself, you can't fall asleep all that well, um, you might want to try getting a decaf tea. Um, I drink, I did drink have decaf okay. tea at night and then okay. in the morning I drink my caffeine one. The regular one, yeah, perfect. Tea, so if you're not worried about caffeine, the other thing that tea and coffee can do is they can act like a diuretic, which means that they make you pee. <laughs> so- I know that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I don't know. I, if it works for you, that's totally fine. Um, okay. You can try drinking the tea maybe a, a mm -hmm. little bit before and maybe two hours before bed. Okay, one question. I, what about, about, what about um, if you're having, um, if you, sorry, it, it's okay. So if you have a diet, and I don't think you have a diet, diet and then there's and then the, the diet um, thing you like like red watches is telling you what the, what 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 diet you you are in watching. Is that okay to have a diet? Stuff. Um, I think it's okay to have a diet. I don't like the word diet. I prefer Me neither. Just the, I I prefer the term habit of eating, which just means you eat according to what your Whatever goal this, is. The so, goal is okay. Yeah, so it depends on what your goal is. If your goal, I think as long as you're making sure that you're eating enough, that you're not starving and your body is still functioning properly. Um, but it would depend on if you want to reach your goal weight and how, how far over or how many pounds you would have to lose. Um, okay. but, other, like, but you don't have to be on a diet just for weight loss. You can be on a diet for other reasons. Um, for example, you can be on a diet just to avoid foods that upset your tummy you can be on a diet for environmental reasons you can be on a diet for um, animal reasons and things like that so it depends on what your goal is all right thank you mm -hmm. now, i have a question too yes, yes. So, uh, about a milk if people are going to bed mm -hmm. so uh, about milk a good before healthy so is milk in, good before bed? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't see why not. Um, I think that, I think it's fine. Yeah. As long as, you know, you're getting enough sleep, um, and mm -hmm. it's not keeping you up. You're not, you know, going to the washroom every couple of hours. I, it's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have okay, thank you. two more questions that have hands raised. So we'll ask them to unmute. So Cassie, you can go first. I have three questions. Mm -hmm. What to do if you drink lots of water and still have a headache? What do you do? So if you have a headache and you drink lots of water and you still have a headache, oftentimes um, I don't want, so I don't want to, to say this in a way that makes you think I'm a physician because there's no way I'm a physician. So if you really have a persistent headache and it's really, really bad, I would suggest talking to your physician. Um, but Oftentimes it means you're just really tired or something like that. You can try eating a snack. You can try having a nap um, and things like that. If it's really persistent, I would definitely seek uh, medical advice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is Gatorade 2 better than regular Gatorade? Um, Gatorade 2, is that the one that doesn't have any calories in it? I believe so um is it better or not um it depends i would personally i would go with just the regular one that has sugar um because the g2 i'm assuming is sweetened with artificial sweetener um so if you're gonna have sugar so both drinks have sugar in them so if you're gonna have sugar you may as well just have regular sugar versus artificial sweetener um because artificial sweetener there's been studies done and it's really not good for your your gut health um so i would just go with regular and what would be a good bedtime snack as well Hmm, good question. So I think something that's really easy on your stomach. So something that is carbohydrate based, but really easy to digest. So something like um, a banana, I know I say bananas so much, but bananas truly are a magical fruit. So I say something like bananas or maybe some peanut butter on a cracker, a piece of toast, um, things that are just really easy to absorb. I would avoid I would avoid foods high in protein and I would definitely avoid foods high in fat. Okay, that's all. Okay, Alex, we can ask you because you've been waiting a while. <laughs> and then I think we wanna wrap up soon, Robin. Um yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> so Alex, you're gonna be the last question. Okay. Um, one question. Uh, uh, a 
Are we having a good time? Yes, I think so. I hope so. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other questions for me, Alex? Um, to be honest, just, just one more oh. question. Uh, do you like the healthy habits? The healthy habits? Is that from the Special Olympics? Um, yes, that's right. Yeah, yes, yes. I've looked through it and I, I do like it. I agree with everything that's in it. And I think it's a great way to track what you're eating and what you're drinking. Um, and yeah, I, I do like it. It's a great way. It's I like how it's really concise and it's all kind of in one package. So I think it's a great um, resource for you guys. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Mm hmm Awesome. So guys, everyone can thank Robin for sharing with us today. Uh, say thank you. If you have thank any- you, Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Thanks. Thanks, thank Robin. You. Thank you, Robin. I can't wait to be again next Tuesday. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. I will be back, I think, February 16th. Um, can't wait. Yeah, 16. thank you so much, you guys. I had a blast. Thank you, Robin. Blast. My Monday pleasure. Evening. I have one oh, quick question. Yes. Yes. Uh, what if someone's excessive sweater and what causes that? So like sweating? Like sweating, I'll be peeling potatoes or going for exercise or whatever and I'll just pour. Yeah, you know what? I will let you in on a secret. I am an excessive sweater. And what it means is That's it's actually a medical condition That's called right. hyperhidrosis. Um, and what that means is your, that it means your body, your sweat glands overactivate and they just sweat for no reason. And I, I do suffer from that. Um, and so things that cause it, it's typically hereditary. So you will get it from your parents or your grandparents or your great grandparents. Um, so it's just something that's passed on. Um, and what you can do about it is if you don't care about it, then that's totally fine. If it does affect you, um, definitely talk to your doctor and they will refer you to a dermatologist. And with your dermatologist, you can determine the best way to um, fix fix it or, or help uh, alleviate the, the amount of sweating. What did you call it? Chipper what? <laughs> it's called um, hyperhidrosis. So I can type it in the chat. Oh, okay. Okay. And it could be hereditary, right? Yes. Yep, I've suffered from this since I was 13. So I know exactly how you feel. It's awful. <laughs> it's calmed down a bit, but it was a lot. Hyperhidrosis. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hyperhidrosis. And so oftentimes you can even just grow out of it. As you get older, the sweating might might dissipate and become less and less. Okay, thank you. And lots of athletes do that because for athletes, lots of athletes do sweat lots. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to end it there for questions. If you guys have any other questions for Robin, you can send them to us at peakprogram at specialolympicsab.ca. Um, and if we get enough emails, and we'll chat with Robin again. Or you can post them in the Facebook group, and we can look at getting some questions answered by Robin from there. Okay. So good night, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow at Workout Wednesday.